Okay, thank you, Eric. Uh, first uh, of all, my apologize for not speaking in French, but I think this is go uh, going to be the last uh, presentation in English you will suffer today. So, um, thank you all for coming as one of the persons in charge of the project. I'm very happy to see so many people here, and also in Zaragoza we will have also uh, 200 uh, people. So. Uh, I'm, I'm very, very happy because of that. So uh, in this very short presentation, I'm going to uh, summarize some of the results we found uh, working uh, in the project with flavor precursors. So I, I'm not going to repeat here the, the, the explanation about precursors because Professor Cacho and Schneider have explained wonderful details wonderfully this morning how uh, precursors, um, the nature of precursors, but just a quick reminder, and uh, remind that uh, precursors are these um, molecules that are compound of a, a non-volatile part and a, a volatile part that is the flavor, really, the volatile part. So they are in the grape, and when we... Um, uh, in, in the mast or in the wine, uh, via enzymatic or acid hydrolysis, this bone that connects the, the, the molecule is broken. So there remains the non-volatile part, and the volatile part becomes the flavor. So we have two species, really, uh, on flavor precursors. We can study um, the whole molecule, the bonded flavor, or the release flavor. And in the project, we, we, we have done both things. Both things. So, how do we study the, the precursors? Well, um, first, of course, we, we uh, harvested the grapes, as Eric has said, uh, Greenwich and Carignan from um, Spain, and Ferservadu and Grossmansen from France. And we uh, harvested the grapes for three consecutive years, 2009, 2011. And uh, here in this picture, you can see two things. One thing is that the, the grapes were uh, picked by hand, and the, there is another important thing here, and probably more important, is that university professors also can pick grapes. <laughs> so this is important in the actual economic situation. So you, we had the grapes. <laughs> Slower. No, no, no. It's okay. Okay. Uh, so we have the the grapes, and then we are going to analyze the precursors, and, and what we've done uh, is, uh, we have done is uh, crush the grapes, macerate them, filtrate, uh, centrifugate, and then we finish with the mast, clarify, and we uh, pass this uh, mast through a cartridge with a sorbent that will isolate the uh, flavor precursors. So, we remove the precursor from the rest of the, of the material that is there, that is a lot. And uh, after that is isolated, we uh, uh, remove from the sorbent the, the, the flavor precursors, and then we will do things with that. So you can see in this uh, short video how we percolate the, um, in this case, is wine, but it's the same for must. Through this part here, this is the solvent where the molecules are retained, and then we elute them, and then you can see here, clear, this is an organic solvent, but the molecules are there for us to work with them. So after that, what we've done, we have two options. We can analyze directly the, 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 the bonded flavor. This can be done by liquid chromatography, or we can release uh, the, the, the the molecule, and then analyze by gas chromatography mass spectrometry. In the case of uh, glycosidic precursors, we have done in this way, but for cysteinic precursors, we have done with liquid chromatography. So there we obtain our data. And this is for precursors, but pretty, more, uh, pretty much the same when it's with a slight modification. For the rest of the data, you will see this afternoon and in the next uh, presentation. So after that, sorry introduction about how we work in this case, I will show you some results. Uh, first, uh, glycosidic precursors in grapes. So this is the uh, 
bonded molecule, and then uh, we release and analyze this, this content. In this case, it's the summatory of uh, monoterpenols in, this is mainly is linalol and derivatives and alpha terpenol. Uh, we can, uh, uh, also you can see here that we have uh, the, the grapes split in four blocks, Grenade in the different years. Uh, these also have replicates, but uh, this is the, the, the summary. So uh, Carignan to three, three, uh, in the three years, Ferser Badu and Grossmans. So uh, um, it has been uh, said before, and uh, monoterpenols are very important, but not for non-floral varieties. Actually, uh, it can be established a limit of maybe 25 micrograms per kilogram of these compounds, and if the this level is a seed, we can expect some very uh, subtle uh, floral notes in the, in the, in the wines. But take into account that uh, this is really uh, an acid hydrolysis and probably uh, in the, the actual content is going to be lower because this is the experiment in the lab. So uh, nothing surprises here, so you can see uh, more or less what is expected. Another, and in this case, very important compounds. Uh, Professor Ferreira has told this morning, these uh, compounds, norisoprenoids, here are the main two compounds, beta-damastenone and alpha-ionone, uh, sorry, beta-ionone. These are very important compounds for the enhancement of the fruity notes. And here you can see, we, we have found in, in previous uh, studies that there is no relationship with the variety in the content of the damastenone. But uh, here, we observed pretty much the same, that the influence of the vintage was more important than the, than the really the, the cultivar, the variety, okay? And even you can see the same pattern in the three years, even this is from different parts of the Pyrenees, but more or less the same pattern. Uh, now we move to the wines. We are going to, uh, to uh, show, uh, see uh, data now that is the compounds release in the wine. So this is actual in the, actually in the wine. They come from precursors, but they are like this in, in the wine. And the wines are going to explain are the control wines, because we uh, uh, carry out a lot of uh, um, different vinifications. But these are the control wines for the, the sake of comparison, just. Olivier later will tell you about these different vinification routes and everything, but here they are only the wines. So this is the content for the wines. And uh, again, remember, uh, you need 25 micrograms per liter of these compounds to, to impact, to have sun impact. Or remember what uh, Professor Agosin has saw this morning for uh, Moscatel, the, he was talking about 200, 300 micrograms per liter here. We uh, can even reach 12 micrograms per liter. So we confirm that there is no impact of these compounds in, the, in, the, in these cultivars, in these grapes. But what happened with um, real, real content of beta damastenone in, in, in wine? It's a flavor enhancer, and we have found in the lab that uh, about three, three, yeah, three micrograms per liter can enhance the fruity note of the thylesters. And here you can see, again, there is no, I will not draw conclusion from the cultivars just from this few data. I, I have told you before that uh, in our previous experiments, studies, uh, we haven't found a correlation with the grape variety. Of course, the, 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 the damastenone comes from the, the grape, but it's not uh, so uh, strong. No, you can see the vintage is probably another, another factor are, are more important than this one. But in the Spanish uh, uh, grapes, in this case, we see levels that exceed this threshold of three p p v or three micrograms per liter. So uh, and another compound of varietal origin in wine are uh, uh, polyfunctional mercatams. And here is just the, the compound released in, 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 the, in, in the wines. And you can see here that uh, these this, uh, cultivars have no uh, really, n they are not really known because of the characteristic uh, flavors of these compounds. But 
we know that uh, above 50 micro, uh, sorry, 50 nanograms per liter of mercator acetate in white wines, you can really appreciate a um, tropical fruit note. Really uh, interesting. And in this case, only uh, in Grand Mansen in the year 2010, we observed this. But for the rest of the wine, you can see it's not, uh, it's not uh, really reaching a, a, a important level. Um, also, we, apart from that, we um, study the, the, the date of the harvest. Uh, so for the red wines, for the red grapes, we um, harvested the grapes uh, seven days before phenolic maturity and also at maturity. And in the case of first Servadou, for example, we uh, observe in the tasting, in the tasting note, we, we observe a decrease in the note um, pyrazine vegetable. And we correlated this very, very, uh, we found a very good correlation with, the, with a decrease of isobutyl methoxyparacin and also with a decrease in 4 mercato for uh, methyl 2 pentanone. And in other case, in Greenwich wines, we uh, see an increase, uh, we saw an increase in the uh, spicy note, and we observe a correlation with uh, Wyacol increase and also ethyl vinylate. Uh, so, uh, for conclusion, take home messages from our uh, experiments in this part of the project. Monotrypinols coming from gly glycosidic precursors have minor significance on the aroma of the study grapes. The found quantities of uh, damastenone reinforce the fruity aroma of the studied red wines. And it has been confirmed from this data the strong influence of the vintage in the content of these precursors. Uh, and that's all. Thank you for your attention.